Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. My name is Sarah Karaja. I'm reading a tribute to my dear beloved son, Bishop Alan Kiuna. My dear son, though my heart is heavy with sorrow, I will not dwell solely on the loss and grief, but take a moment to recognize and embrace the beauty and joy that you brought into our lives. For it is in these moments of joy, love and laughter, which I shared with you, that I find solace and comfort. And through these moments, you shall still continue to inspire and strengthen us. I will forever be grateful for the unconditional love and care you shared with my daughter and I, we will greatly be missed, Bishop Allen. In life, I loved you dearly. In death, I love you still. In my heart, you hold a very special place for me. Till we meet again, I love you. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Uh, good evening. Uh, Sifiwe. Amen. Mine is very brief. My name is Stephen Kirubin Joka. I was uh, the eldest brother to the bishop, and I married into this family. I only want to say one thing that bishop has left the world with. He has left with something called spiritual intellectual capital. So let us appreciate and get deep in try to understand what spiritual intellectual capital means, because there is nobody else with that capacity. Thank you so much. And thank you. God bless you. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. All protocol, protocols observed. My name is Jane Kirubi, and that's the Kirubi who just spoke. Um, I come from a really close-knit family, and it's in no small measure due to our dad. Our dad was so loving. He loved us hard and loved our mother even better than that. And uh, I, I think that's the reason why we are like that. I am I'm really, really, like, insanely close to my sisters. Really close. So earlier on, in the younger years, my, my sister, Pastor Kathy, used to work uh, in an international company on Kenyatta Avenue. Um, so every, I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. So every lunchtime, I would be in CBD, city center, um, she used to do prison worship at uh, City Hall and Charter Hall. So I would go pick her up from the office and we would walk to Charter Hall and City Hall or City Hall and um, she would do the prison worship, we listen to the word and then we would walk to City Market for, because she only had like 15 minutes left now. So we'd walk to City Market for some fruit salad. As you can see I dropped the fruit but anyway that's a story for another day. Uh, so uh, one, in, during one of those days, one of those times in that period, we were walking back to her office and then we heard Kathy, some, some deep voice, Kathy. So we turn around and there's this six foot tall hunk of a man and I'm like, whoa. So my sister, so we are both standing and he's walking towards us and um, I'm like, how come, how come I'm not heard about this? So I'm thinking of so many things, but I'm mostly she's in so much trouble. Anyway, needless to say, we were introduced. I walked a little ahead, and then when she caught up with me, I was, I was like, so is he saved? Because I knew that would be a deal breaker with my sister. So he, she said, oh, he is not only saved, he wants to take me out for coffee. I was, whoa, this is getting good. A few dates in, uh, they got to know each other. Father, and then uh, he joined our trips, so to speak, to City Market for, uh, for fruit salad. And then we got to know each other, and as we got to know each other, um, sometimes he would borrow my sister's car, and he would go and, uh, and run his errands or whatever. Um, then one, one day my sister called me distressed. Oh, by the way, this was happening while it was in between jobs. When someone tells you they're in between jobs, that's a fancy way of saying they're jobless. So, so my sister, um, 
she calls me, she's distressed. Oh my God, his, his, uh, Alan, as we call him at the time, he has been in a car accident. And um, remember the guy's job, so he's not gonna fix his car. So I'm like, okay, don't worry, we're gonna fix the car. Um, and my sister's like, uh-uh, I think I need to cut him loose because it's too much, it's already a few months, the guy has, doesn't have a job even now. So I think I need to cut him loose. Normally, she's a very good, good sister. She's a very good person. Me, not so much. But that day, I was the good person. I was a good guy. I was on his side. I think it's because we are both introverts. So whenever she went back to the office, we would sit. We are not smiling. We're just, you know, but we're having a good time. We are introverts, remember? So we're having a good time. But anyway, uh, I convinced her not to, not to dump him. Because uh, <laughs> she really was going to. And we continued, like, we, we were really, I could tell you a million things. But fast forward to, to two months ago. Two months ago, one day he says uh, he has a pain in his hip. And my sister calls me and says, come, uh, let's go see what's going on. So we go to the hospital, and we're, thinking, we're not even thinking anything of it. Oh, it's, it's nothing. So we stay two weeks in, and um, it starts going south a little bit. And during all this time, while he was in hospital, my sister did not cancel her preaching assignments. She kept them. So one day, she was out on such an assignment, and he told me, I just want to go home and be with my wife and kids. I was like, oh, okay, we'll, we'll see what to do. And I tried to console him, but the following morning, he was adamant. He was like, he had it. He wanted to go home. So my sister did not want him to go home at that point. Because she was like, no, he needs more care. Let's wait a little bit. So he calls me, says, sis, do you love me? He asked me. I said, I'm like, yeah, you know I do. Then, I, then make sure I get out of here. I want to go home. So I told, I told him, Brobish, I'll make sure we do that. We go home. So I turned to my sister. Now that's one, but I have to turn to my sister. Because, oh my gosh, she's not, she wants him to stay. He doesn't want to stay. So I convinced her, I said, listen, it's good for his mental. Let's go home. And tomorrow, if we need to come back, we come back. But let's go home. He'll be so happy. And let me tell you, it was, uh, it was not easy. It was very challenging. But we did go home. And when, when you go to the house, oh my God. When you go to the house, he was crying. He was wailing. He was saying, thank you. Thank you for bringing me back home. Oh, I know I have a beautiful house. I am so thankful to God. And, and from there, we just had this, this journey, really tough, uh, for probably four weeks of, of the back and forth. We had a great team of going to the hospital and going back home. A great team. And God bless you. You know yourselves. God bless you so much. Um, oh, my sister. Oh, my God. My sister. I look at her. My sister is that Proverbs 31 woman. No, you all don't understand. I watched her wheel her husband. When her husband checked out, she was wheeling him to leave. She was saying, no, baby, don't go. We got a lot to do. Don't go. We got so much work. Please hang around. Please. We would try and encourage him to eat. He wouldn't. He wouldn't eat for us. But when she came, oh, baby, please eat. And, he would, and she would be so happy. She was so just loving and caring. Oh, and, and mom... Mom, senior mom, thank you so much for even picking my sister and not throwing her away like the other girl, like you did the other girls. Thank you for acknowledging her. But uh, my sister, when I look at you, I'm so heartbroken. I know how you loved him. I don't know how he loved you. But through God, you'll be able to make it. Mm. Uh, all I tell you, weeping in doors. Amen. For a night, the joy comes in the morning. I love Amen. you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Auntie Jane. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sam Kahodo. Uh, and this is my wife, Irene Kahodo. We are honored to have all of you. 
all protocol observed. I want to read this tribute to my friend, to my brother. It is with a very heavy heart that I write my brother's tribute and friend, Bishop Alan Kiuna. But we are comforted by the fact that we are celebrating a life full, well lived. When my sister Kathy introduced me to her friend, I thought he was a cool guy, which he turned out to be. Actually, very charming, just like my sister has said. I had fought of many, fought in quotes. Many guys who really were attracted to my sister. But this one was different. I actually find myself, found myself encouraging my sister. Uh, don't ask me how, but I encouraged her. Then he introduced, she introduced him to our family, especially my, my, my parents, and they all just loved him. He was this kind of guy, just, he was a good guy. As a matter of fact, after a very short time, we even began doing printing business together as family. That is how easy it was for him to adapt to new challenges, which he did with matches. Little did I know that this is the same person who would be getting married to my sister a year later, let alone me being his best man. What? Not even after we got married, he took up his calling from God to venture into full-time ministry. He took all, all, all of us by surprise, but he knew exactly what he wanted in life. It wasn't easy. He went through a very, very rough time, all that while having a lot of faith. God finally came through for him and Kathy, and JCC was bad. All in all, he has been a very close friend indeed to myself and my whole family members, and my family members, my mom being one of his cheerleaders. He loved his wife and family in a way that was so special. A man whom one could count on, as generous as they come, a keen listener. Bishop Alan was a go getter, literally so. When he decided he would go for something, or anything, it didn't matter. He would do it almost seamlessly. He loved quality and excellence. He introduced me to a game called squash. We would compete so seriously until my wife and sisters would wonder whether we were related. We both wanted to win so, so much. He was absolutely competitive. He took up golf, which he did so well, it seemed like he had played it all his life. Oh, he was an ardent fan of Manu. While I'm a national fan, you don't want to find us discussing that. Not in small tones, no. Not in small tones. Bishop was a very sharp, he was very sharp. He would contribute on any topic, and I'm sure that one many people can attest. And so, so well that would wonder whether he had studied about it. Very eloquent. He loved politics and current affairs. A good debater he was. Even when he first fell in in 2018, it took not even, it, it, it didn't dampen his spirit. He remained so positive and steadfast and fought with all that he had till the end. Yes, a general for Christ might have fallen, but heaven has received one who is standing right at the feet of Jesus. We as a family all know too well that he is in a much better place. Fare thee well, my brother, to Taonana Badai. Amen. Let's appreciate the family. Let's clap for them. Thank you so much, dear family. And now we are going to move on to the children of our father, Vanessa and Jeremy.